Hello everybody! I am back again in my Attack of the B Team multiplayer server and today I want to show you a couple really cool things. Going back to the computerized mass storage system, uh, first I'm going to show you a couple ways to get items in and out of your system. We're going to cover uh, the way that was the way I use here in this base and the way generic B and chimney swift use and how you can kind of upgrade that. And then the next I'm going to show you about uh, the deep storage units from Mine Factory Reloaded and how those can be really useful to you. And then finally I'm going to show you a cool little automation that I use all the time here and that will really save you quite a bit of time. So let's get started. Right, the first thing I want to go over is ways to get items in and out of your mass storage system. If you watch the tutorial where we made the thing, you'll recognize something like this. You got an output chest, an input chest, and then you request stuff out of your system. It comes into this output chest, like so. You take everything out, anything you don't need, you just put back into the input chest, and it gets sucked right in right away right back into the system. It's kind of it works. It's a great little way to uh start out. But the two chests can be a little cumbersome. So, uh when Generic B and Chimney Swift decided to implement their mass storage system, uh they did something like this. It gets rid of the second chest and instead you have a hopper underneath your one chest with your routed interface pipe with your extractor chip. And then what happens is when you get on this pressure plate here, it locks the hopper and nothing can get sucked out of this chest. Like so. And you can pull your stuff out. Let's pull it all out. Dun, 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 dun. And as long as we're standing on this pressure plate, it stays in this chest. And then we can put stuff back in, take it out. Let's put four stacks back into the system. So when we hop off, all of a sudden you see it start pulling back into the system. But it's only pulling back one at a time. That's because this hopper is a nasty little bottleneck and that you got this upgraded extractor chip here, but it's only pulling out one at a time because the hopper is only pulling one item out of the chest one at a time. So it really is kind of slow. If you have a full chest full of stuff, it's going to take a long time to empty it out, and put it back into your system. So you can fix that by doing something like this. Now this setup is functionally the same. You hop on, it locks this chest, you can't put anything, or nothing gets sucked out of it when you place it in there. You can pull everything out of your system. Like so. And, take it out, put back some extra stuff, let's put back nine stacks. Then as soon as we pop off of this, everything starts getting sucked right back in really, really fast. Nine stacks, already done. Four stacks over there, still going. And the way that works is you got this other second chest down here with your normal extractor chip upgraded, of course. And you've got this item duct thing. So I'm going to show you how to make that really quick. You're going to want to take an item duct. You can use any of the item ducts. The impulse item ducts are quicker. Uh, opaque or transparent, it doesn't matter. But uh, the regular ones work just the same. And it's not quite as fast, but it works. It's much faster than the hopper, that's for sure. So we're going to take our impulse item duct. We're going to stick it right here. We're going to take our crescent hammer, and we're going to right-click on this top little junction and make it so that it pulls out of this chest and goes into that one. And then we're going to take a pneumatic servo, and we're going to upgrade this item duct. So we're just going to right-click the uh, item duct with a pneumatic servo like so. It'll tell us the servo has been installed. Then we're going to take an empty hand and we're going to right click on that little red arrow. We're going to go to the uh, redstone controls over here on the side and we're going to switch it from high to low. And that's going to make it so that it turns on whenever a redstone signal is not being sent to it. So once we get on this pressure plate that will turn off and it won't pump anything else out of the chest. So we go in here, put things in, they all stay right where they're supposed to be. And then as soon as we pop off, that thing activates and it sends everything to this chest, which then gets sent right back into our storage system. So that's a really nice upgrade to generic B system. And uh, I think you'll find 
that it probably won't be an issue with either one, but that one's just really cool to watch everything fly out. So use that instead. The last system is the one I use in my base. And it is just a one chest system that you can see. And you right click on your request pipe. Oops, I didn't put anything in there. Nope. Alright, so to get stuff into your system first, you just drop it on the ground. And there it goes. And that works because down here, you've got another chest with this item collector from the random things mod. And what this does is anytime an item is around this chest, it will take it out and stick it in that chest. And then it gets sucked out of this chest because of our item extractor chip. So now we come over here, pull things out, and we pull out what we need and just drop on the floor anything that we don't. Like so. And I really like that because here you, you're stuck on this pressure plate. You can't come over here and do some crafting and then go back and forth. You gotta you gotta get to this uh pressure plate every single time. You can't leave anything in this chest because it'll get sucked out and that kind of thing. So I really, really like this system. And what's really cool about it is that we can do our dropping from inside the chest. So watch this. We right click here. We got all our stuff going and we can hit Q while we're hovering over stuff to drop single items. We can do control Q to drop full stacks of items and they go straight back into our system. Or we can do shift Q to drop all the stone in our inventory and all the stone in the chest all at once. So you, you really can do everything from this chest screen like you can with those. You're just dropping stuff instead of leaving it in the chest. So it's really cool. I really like this system. Uh, the only problem you may find is if you have a crafting station, right? Or your crafting table right next to uh, your chest. Because what will happen is you're coming over here. Say you want to make a button. You just, you're just you going in, in a hurry and you put all your stone in there. You grab a button. Then you walk away. And you're like, oh, I meant to pick that up. Too bad. It's already in your system. So what you want to do is you want to take a crafting table and you want to put it in another crafting table. And then you get this crafting station. And what this crafting station does is when you put stuff in it and you walk away, it doesn't drop on the ground. It stays on the crafting table, which is really, really cool. So you're probably going to want to switch those out for your crafting tables anyway. But uh, you definitely want to do that if you're around one of these systems because this is a 7 by 7 area that it's going to just pick up anything that gets dropped on the floor. So that's my system. That's the generic B system. That's kind of an upgraded version of it. And that's our little old standard one. So any of those will work. There's probably a couple more that you could come up with. But uh, those will definitely get the stuff in and out of your system in the most efficient way possible for you. So let's do something else. All right, the next thing I want to cover are these deep storage units from Mine Factory Reloaded. And these are really cool because they're essentially an infinite storage device for one specific item. When you click on one, you have this interface. You have two inputs. Here's your output. And then you have a stored and a number. And when you add an item to it, that becomes the only item you can add to it. So you added a cobblestone, and it puts it right in the output. But if you add any more, it starts boosting up that stored number that you're seeing. And basically, we can just keep storing cobblestone in here up to like 2 billion or something ridiculous. So basically, it's, it, it's, it's an infinite storage. You don't have to worry about filling this thing up. And if we ever try to put something else in it, it just pops right off the top. And these are really cool because eventually you're going to have... Uh, your double chest and you're gonna get like one or two items that you just seem to have a whole lot of like cobblestone like if you have an automated potato farm you're gonna start getting potatoes and potatoes and potatoes or like bones if you have a skeleton farm and they're gonna start taking up a lot of space in these double chests and you don't want to just keep adding double chests for more cobble and more bones and potatoes that's kinda silly so what you want to do is you want to add one of these deep storage units to your system and they're really easy to add you just add the deep storage unit 
you add an interface pipe and then you add these two chips just like any other chest it's going to have a broadcaster chip the broadcaster chip stays at the default settings there's no nothing you need to change there and then the item responder chip what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to the filter and then go to whitelist and then just the one single item that you have in the deep storage unit so in this case we got cobble so we got a cobble in there set it to whitelist the next thing we want to do is to go to the priority preference and you want to click on that and you want to make sure it's higher than all your other storage chests so if you're at the default for your other storage chests it's zero so you just want to set this to one and what that'll do is once you pop those in there and let's grab some cobble out the cobble will go straight to the deep storage unit and not fill up all your other chests now the first time you add one of these to the system you are going to have to pull all the cobble out of your system and then just add it back and then it'll all go to the deep storage unit now the one it, there is one little hitch here we have 640 uh, cobble in this deep storage unit but if we go over here to the routed request pipe we only see 64 and that's because these things only have 64 available to you at one time so when we pull out the 64 it pops right back out and we go back in we see 64 more that's because the storage unit filled in how much you have available with a new 64 so if you're gonna want more than one stack of cobble at a time you do kinda have to go through this hassle of selecting it and pulling it out and then reselecting it and pulling it out and that kinda thing and that can be a bit of a pain uh, it's not a big issue but if you just can't stand it and you really don't want to mess with that here is something you can do you can add another chest and you can add a routed interface pipe for it and then you're gonna need a just a default item broadcaster chip like so and then you're gonna want I'm gonna pull out a fresh one item stock keeper chip we're gonna want an item stock keeper chip now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab a cobble here. I'm going to go into this item stock keeper chip and what these things do is it keeps a stock in the container that it's connected to. So this is empty right now but if we add a cobblestone and then we left and right click to up and down make this number go up and down. Let's pop it up all the way to the top which is 127. Let's add another one 127. Now what this is going to do is this is going to try and keep about four stacks of cobble in this chest at all times. So when we pop that in, it's going to say, hey, I don't have any cobble. I'm supposed to keep cobble. It's going to pop right out of the deep storage unit into here. And that's going to act kind of like a buffer. So we've got about four stacks in there. Plus we have the one stack we have access to from the deep storage unit. When we come here, we can see, hey, there's 318 cobble we can pull out all at once. So that'll fix that one little hitch that's the problem with the deep storage units but other than that they are a great great addition to our computerized mass storage system so let's do something else okay the last thing I want to show you is this cool little automation that I use quite extensively in uh, my own world and at my own base and what it does is it keeps me a nice little cache of stone available all the time. I also use one for potatoes and one for glass. It's all the same thing. But um, basically what happens is I'll come over here and I'll go, hey, I need some stone. Crap. I only have cobble. So then I have to take out the cobble. I have to go smelt it. And I have to wait and wait. And, and when I get my mindset on doing something in Minecraft, I want to do it now. I don't want to wait for some stuff to smelt. So what I did was I set this up so it keeps me like a nice little cache of stone in my system all the time. I can come and I can pull it out. And once I pull it out, it starts creating more. And so there's always a nice couple stacks of stone just waiting for me to, to use. The same with potatoes, the same with um, a glass, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a great little system and I use it quite a bit. So what you're going to want to do is you want to take this redstone furnace. Uh, it's already powered. If you do not have power, 
go check out my other video, my set it and forget it power system and attack of the B team and that will get you started and you'll never have to mess with power ever again. But we're going to put an interface pipe on the input and the output and then we're going to connect it to the rest of the system. Now we're going to want to take a stock keeper chip. Let me grab a fresh one. Stock keeper chip. And we're going to right click it. We're going to go into the stock and we are going to need some cobble. I did not come prepared. And we're going to put some cobble in the stock. We're going to put it at about 8 or so. It can be anywhere from 1 to 64. It really doesn't matter. And then we're going to put it right there in the top. And what's going to happen is it is going to keep this furnace stocked with 8 cobble at all times. And of course, the cobble is going to get smelted into stone and it's going to replenish the cobble. And then when this gets to 64 stone, and of course the A cobble, it was going to stop. Everything's going to stop. And it's going to wait for that stone to be removed. Now, we can't actually see the stone yet, but if we put an item broadcaster chip in the output one, then we come over here and we can see that stone. And that's really, really kind of cool. And in fact, this is all I have for potatoes. I have potatoes coming in here and just a broadcaster chip just waiting to... Uh, to pull out the potatoes when I decide, or the baked potatoes when I pull them out of the system. But this only keeps one stack available for me, and I like having a little bit more than one stack of stone and glass and that kind of stuff. So, what I do here is we're going to take these back off, and instead of going straight into the interface pipe, we are going to go into a hopper. Why a hopper? Well, because a hopper has exactly five inventory spots. So, then we're going to put the routed interface pipe there and go there and now this will continue to smelt stone until the entire hopper is full and then of course there's one stack here which we can't actually see and we can't actually pull out but that's fine uh, we're still gonna have our five available to us through the computer system and that is exactly what we need it saves me so much time I can always just go to my system and I'll know there's gonna be stone there and uh, same with glass and potatoes and they never go oh man and now I gotta go smelt stuff and it's really really useful and it saved me a whole lot of time and it'll save you a bunch of time if you decide to implement it uh, one of these days I promise we will get into the automated crafting but uh, if you try and place a crafting pipe down in a multiplayer server and then add something to it it kind of crashes the server and that's not very good uh, it works mostly in single player but mm, I've had it crash on me a couple times as well so one of these days we're gonna get to that and I'll really show you all the cool stuff you can do with that but not quite yet um, uh, if this video was useful for you please give me a like uh, tell me tell me what you thought uh, give me some feedback I really am Loving the support you guys are giving me. And I plan on doing quite a few more videos if you guys are around to watch. So, till next time, bye.